Oh, I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Don't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. And just that's very snazzy, that, that music. That's uh, dee -dee 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 -dee. all smooth and all. Dee -dee 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 -dee. I know. I know. Somebody did that for me because I did a little green screen thing for them, so they put that together for us. So I thought it was it's worth a punt, worth worth an hour. And again, we've got a whole collection of them. No, actually, we've got half half a dozen <laughs> from different people. Uh, why why does your map of Ireland look more impressive than my map of Ireland? Uh, you've got the entire wild Atlantic way, and I only have Northern Ireland on my map. Well, there's a reason. We'll get to that when we do the news feature. But first things first, right? We're going to do science tonight. This is this are is we? We are. This is going to be sort of, uh, well, sort of scientific. It's about as scientific as me and you's going to get. Uh, I just poured myself a wee Pierce Lions twelve. That's number one. I, I have a few bottles of this and opened another one of these earlier on the week. Okay, this is, this is chuff and lovely. It's really really good. Anyway, but that's not the sciencey bit. You have what you call neck pour. Okay, so when you open a bottle of whiskey. Right. Um, it does. You never judge a whiskey just by, uh, you open by when you open it. Okay. So I have bought. I bought this a while ago, and I've never opened it. Um, this is Bowmore, nineteen year old. This is an Amazon exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. there's quite obviously a bit of colouring on it by the look of things, but uh, yeah. So when you open a bottle of whiskey, it doesn't taste the same. Plus. All the sort of advice is you leave a leave a whiskey in the glass a minute for every year, right? I keep seeing people talk about this and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do is science, baby, right? So I'm going to pour a bit of this now, set it aside. Okay. Do the news. I'll pour another one. We'll do another wee bit, and then pour another, and then we'll compare the three. And okay. see if there are any different. I, I like the I like the I like the strength. How did you manage to keep that bottle more nineteen for a year and a half? Because of about two hundred other bottles sat and opened. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's how that's how we do it, Justin. People Good. keep asking me how how do you not open all your your expensive stuff? It's because I keep all the cheap shit open. <laughs> all right. Okay, <laughs> all right. So we're trying neck pour tonight. Stick with us throughout the show. Neck pour what? and time pour, right? So science, baby, that's yes, that. Mark Kerr says, wow. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. Has anybody ever tried this at home? If you've tried this at home, let us know what you think. Does this work? It doesn't matter if it's a Bowmore. It'll probably work with any whiskey, I would imagine. Well, ideally, I want, you only do it with an age statement. Don't be doing it with something that's not an age statement because you know, that way you can't really do the the, the, the time and taste, you know? So, so I've just thought of something. I've just thought of something. How do people know that I'm not controlling it and that glass is going to change to a different glass when they're not looking? They don't. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. You don't. But honestly, I'm not touching it. That's the same glass that he poured it in sitting there, this, all right? This is the glass in which the first one's poured, okay? And then right. what we'll do is we, we have more Glen Cairn sitting here. So same glass, same all of that, all washed, all dingy. So this is number one. This will be number two. This will be number three. Okay. And then right. we'll do this with this. We'll check them. See uh, if there's a difference. I, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to this. I am definitely, definitely looking forward <laughs> for, forward to this one because, uh, well, I, I I don't I don't know what can happen. I I, well, I I have no idea what can happen in this. Well, put it like this. I I totally agree that you don't really judge a whiskey on the very first pour. Because once the bottle opens, it needs that. It does. It's just I don't know why, but you don't really judge it by the first, the neck pour. So what you do is, you know, you always have a couple, and then it, it sort of um, mellows itself out. But I've no idea the science behind any of that. I haven't a clue. But all I know is that when you first open it, don't it doesn't really count. So twenty minutes. We'll do the news. That's poured now. After the news, we'll pour another one. Then we'll do. The re interview that we did during the week, we'll play it and then we'll do that. And then at the end of the show, we can compare them, see what happens. Fantastic stuff. Ha. <laughs> 
Ha-ha. Ha-ha. <laughs> now, hi, now, first up, the maps that you had up there. The, the, the lovely maps. The lovely maps. Go up here. There they are. Now, the Irish Whiskey Association has launched a new website called irishwhiskey360.com. Okay? Um, that sort of proves there it's not flat, of course. Oh, yes. This is it. <laughs> now, do you, don't, you go on the, don't you go on some <laughs> weird video on YouTube that tells you, uh, tells you that vaccines are injecting you with microchips and that 5G is causing... Oh, my other things. Oh, don't mention them, otherwise you'll get your <laughs> You'll get sick of your bird. <laughs> now, basically this is to highlight, it's to go to the tourism aspect of everything, and it, it, it's highlighting members of uh, the Irish Whiskey Association and where they are, etc., cetera, et cetera, so you can have a look and find out a little bit more, right? But it... Uh, the thing that really caught my eye was they've divided Ireland up into five regions. You know, oh, the... is Meath back? Is Meath reappeared again? Has it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not the the the, the, the Brendan's Pochin thing. The experiment they done, which is quite good. By the way, I hope you watched my review of it. It's quite good. Anyway, um, no, they've divided it up kind of like Scotland, and they're a little bit arbitrary. But I'm not disliking this, if I'm honest. Now, the, the regions that they've done is Dublin, fair enough, Wild Atlantic Way, Ireland's Ancient East, Ireland's Hidden Heartlands, and Northern Ireland. So they've done they've done five of these, and they've pinpointed the distilleries and stuff on them. Not all of them. There's quite a few missing, but it seems very much like a work in progress. Right. There's, little, there's some little videos that have done. There isn't one for Northern Ireland just at the minute, but there's some videos on the different regions and, and so on. And actually, it looks pretty good. I, I think it's it's quite good. Um, it, it does look like a work in progress. But do, go and check it out, Ireland, irishwhiskey360.com. And they've even got a news section. So you can, well, don't even have to listen to us doing the news, but they don't have a jazzy theme tune as us. <laughs> but as I say, it's go on and check it out. But I just... I, the fact that they divided Ireland up into five different regions, I thought was I thought was interesting. Okay, yes, it de definitely warrants a, a Jeff joke. It's uh, what do you see? I can put it on screen for you. I'll give you the the web address here, and you can go yourself. Yes, Ireland three sixty dot com, uh, Irish whiskey three sixty dot com. Very easy website to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, there it is. There and uh, why is it not popping up? Here it is. There it is. That's what it is there, uh, irishwhiskey360.com. So uh, mm -hmm. check that one out. Uh, Jordy Burke saying hello, Brian Cassidy saying hello, Stephen Quinn saying hello, even to you, even to everybody. Uh, what's next this week? Are, are we are we talking golf this week? Because no. the, the caption on this is not golf. Uh, we're talking uh, about the whiskey masters. No, we're, we're not. We're talking about Volkswagen cars. No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> what we're doing is we're talking about... Um, it's an awards time again, and these these ones call themselves the Irish Whiskey Masters. It sounds like some sort of cult, you know that they, 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 you know they, they meet in secret and funny handshakes and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, uh, I've ordered them. I know lots of people aren't interested in awards, but uh, I, 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 they have their place. They really do. Anyway, it was a select selected panel of judges in three different sets. Okay, and they all went to London and had a, a bit of a, a knees up. Which sounds like a decent enough job. I am open for applications. You have to leave it for a day or two. What? <laughs> <laughs> you, want to, you want to fly me to London for a bit of a piss up? No problem. Anyway, now, the Irish Whiskey Masters are split into a number of different categories and then subcategories. So it's blends, single malt, single grains, single pot still. And these then go to standard, premium, super premium, and ultra premium. And they award stuff from that. So, the, the rewards are bronze, silver, gold, and then master status. Okay. Now, Tailing fared the best. They, with, they got four master awards. The 32-year-old single malt, the Renaissance number three, the single grain, and the single grain 13-year-old. Uh, the other master awards went to Jameson Bow Street. Fair enough. Um, Middleton Nutrath Forest, Tullamore Dew 12-year-old special reserve, and 18-year-old single malt 
Uh, the craft Irish whiskey, uh, the Brolach, you know, the, the, the one that... Um, craft Irish whiskey is the one that everybody finds a bit controversial because they had a $2 million bottle release and all that. The, the Jay Bradley, the, the guy that Paul O'Kane interviewed at Belfast Whiskey Week. Um, okay, yeah. but most of those seem correct to me. Well, I mean, Method of Madness single grain, Red Breast 12, can't argue with that, really. Uh, Method of Madness pot still. John's Lee and 12-year-old, Red Breast Lost Eye, Red Breast 12-year-old Cast Strength, Red Breast 27, Red Breast 21, Yellow Spot and Barry Kroger Legacy. All got uh, master status. Um, they're, all, they're all sort of classic whiskies. Um, some I prefer better than others. Some I haven't tried, obviously. Um, yeah, but it, it's interesting that they do these different categories. And, and I, know, I know some people are very dismissive of a lot of these awards because there's various shenanigans that we know goes on kind of behind the scenes and some of them. But when a distillery gets these, they, they like to print it and say that somebody's at least recognising what we've done, you know. So yeah, um yeah, good, good on them. I thought it I thought it was I thought I thought it was the dumb thing to mention them, but I do like Irish whiskey masters, you know. <laughs> uh, there's Michael Massey saying there's too many awards. My shopping trolley got one last week. Yes, yes. I, I, there is a bit of that. Um, but there, there are the respected ones. You know, when you're talking, um, if you have a look at some of the panels and that, or some of the, the, the judges and the whiskey masters, you know, these guys do know what they're talking about. There's no two ways about why don't, it. So. Why don't we start one? Irish Whiskey Review, Worst Whiskies of the World. No, that would be a good one. The, Justin, the controversial <laughs> controversial awards are the ones that you have to pay to enter. All right. And you have to pay to enter in certain categories. Do you see where there might be some sort of, um, oh, yeah. shall we say, uh, controversy about the awards process? Yes. yes. <laughs> you right. know? Well, yeah. if you want to buy me a golf, I'll say whatever you like about the whiskey. <laughs> Trust me on this. Just, Justin <laughs> Justin was on his radio show the other day, Belfast Eight Nine, and he talked about how moral he was, and he wouldn't buy stuff that he morally disagreed with. I let you in on a secret, folks. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's easily, easily corrupted by money. <laughs> yes, I can be bought with a bar of chocolate. Yes, I know, I know, I know. It's, I will vouch for this. <laughs> <laughs> Curly Murley and he's as happy as Larry. <laughs> That's terrible. That's absolutely true. Uh, there you go. There you go. What are we doing? What are we doing next? Uh, oh yes. We're, 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 oh yes. Listen. Years ago, I was down south at Anniskerry, staying with my cousin, mm -hmm. and he introduced me to the joys of breakfast cereal for supper. Normally, most people have toast for supper, but he introduced me to breakfast cereal for supper. For supper, and. Uh, well, basically, snap, crackle, and pop at night actually works. Well, this, it really this, does. This is the best of both worlds for you, Justin. It is. Well, this caught me eye during the week. Basil Hayden, uh, the, the American bourbon, has released a new offering called Toast. Okay? And I've adopted a, an, an unusual mash bill. What they've done is... Um, now, nor normally... Bourbon has to be it has to be a minimum of fifty one percent corn and then forty nine percent other cereals or it has to be a minimum of fifty one so it can be anything above that. So Basil Hayden's typical mash bill is sixty three percent corn, twenty seven percent rye, and ten percent malted barley. Now this toast, what they've done is they've taken out the rye and used brown rice instead. Okay, yeah. So it's initially aged in a level four char barrel. With some finished in toasted oak barrels and then blend it back in. Okay. So forty percent ABV. Um. So with with the rye not being there, I was taking. I'll, I'll take out uh, some of that rye spice that you get in it, and I imagine I haven't tasted it yet, but I imagine you'll get much more softer, um, more earthy notes to it. Well, it go like the Japanese takamine sort of stuff, no, it? No, the takamine stuff is totally different because it's koji fermented. Right. Really, really different. Okay. But this, so this is it's just a different cereal that you're getting mixed in. And I, I, I mean, that could be interesting. That could be, it's another sort of, I like I like the ones because whenever we're talking to Lauren later on, I like it when they change something a little bit 
is a deviation from the standard normal because then you can get do a side by side comparison. Do you prefer this to this, or is it totally a different monster? Then it's a different ball game. How do you think they came up with the idea for this? Is well, you see, they've done it before, but they've done it in a very limited edition. This, on the other hand, is now uh, uh, it's going to be part of their core range. So this is this is a, a good thing. I like it when you have something that is a product that's very similar to a standard product that's a slight deviation. You know, so it's uh, yeah. <laughs> Michael Matthews says he wouldn't fancy sharing a room with anyone after snap cracker on pop and a gallon of stout. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, good. it could be worse. It could be all brown and, and, and stuff. <laughs> Listen, make sure you comment, like, and share, especially on the YouTube channel Ari's Risk Review and on Facebook too. Remember to hit share and share the stream with your friends. It helps us help you, and it goes up to a wider audience then as well. And uh, is it? It, it's 16 minutes past. Is it time for you to try one of them yet? No? No, no. No, oh. no not yet. We'll do another news. And then we'll put another one in. And then we'll get back to it. Oh, oh. Science. We have to do science, baby. It has to be right. Okay. What's next tonight then? Now, we're always talking about India and how India is the biggest risky market in the world and all that. Blah, blah, blah. Right. We know that. The Azu, biggest drinks company in the world. Well, what the Azu have done is they've set up what's said to be the most advanced e-commerce whiskey store uh, to date in partnership with Delhi Duty Free. Okay. Now, the idea behind this is and they, they wanted to create um, better digital, digital connectivity. That's what they say. And they want to do this by allowing people to peruse the Duty Free that they then pick up at the airport. Okay, I've heard of this concept before, but none of us are going to, get to do this anytime soon. Because, well, probably well. not. But this is the thing: one of the things that they incorporated into this is they, they used a company called Gamefield uh, to to come up with a thing called What's Your Whiskey. So you can go to whatsyourwhiskey dot com, and you, you you answer a number of questions. And then it selects a whiskey for you. Now, obviously, it's a Diageo whiskey. Now, there, but there is plenty of Diageo whiskeys. There's, you know, they, they own an awful lot of whiskey. Okay. So Diageo get you to do this. Now, they, they say it uses artificial intelligence to pick out your bottle. Uh, when I did it, um, it came up with uh, Lagavulin 12, uh, which, uh, if it's artificial intelligence, um, then it's doing it right because I love Lagavulin 12. It's super whiskey, super, super stuff. So, yeah. Okay. But it's clever now, the way it's doing the whole thing. I bet, right. So, and obviously, that's pretty close to Glen Scotia, isn't it? That The sort of flavour profile of that Lagavulin 12, would that be similar to that? Yeah. Not, re not, not really, no. Um, do, you, a, do you think it read your mind using AI then? Do you? Um, who knows, Justin? Uh, it's the AI is coming for us all, folks. Have to, we'll have to get the tinfoil hats on and all again <laughs> because it, artificial oh, intelligence. Hold on, do I have time to try this? How long does it take? Does it take ages? No, no, it's, it's fairly quick. If you want to bring it up, it's yeah, people. okay, right. So, we do see, uh, we'll switch this on, right? That's it there. Now, I'm going to try this. This this is at uh, yep. diazuswatcherwhiskey.com, right? And I'm going to try this. So you should be able to see the screen. And I'm going to hit let's go, right? And it's saying there, continue. Do you like fresh rosemary? And I'm going to say, no, I'll pass. Continue, right? All right. Now, mm -hmm. how do you feel about chilies? Well, it's going not to... be you. You pick it. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to try. I like chilies, but don't don't like me. So I'm going to say no on that one. And then hit continue. Get them away from me. Strong start. I've got a strong opinion on this. Let me see. Cinnamon. Do you like cinnamon apple pie? Yes, mm -hmm. you do. Not not greatly. I do like cinnamon cinnamon and apple pie. Maybe rich. Yes, cut me a slice. Yes, just like American <laughs> pie. Here we go. Uh, dried apricots, only in fruit cake. So delicious. Oh, my favorites. Yes, I think I do like dried apricots. Orange juice. I think I really like that. Who doesn't love O.J. Simpson? I don't. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, halfway there. We're halfway there. I see the cocktails being mixed already. Do you like fresh ginger? 
I do like fresh ginger, so I think we'll hit that strongly, right? How often do you eat bananas? Sometimes on the regular. I'm going to hit sometimes, even though I eat quite a few bananas. Fancy a scoop of vanilla ice cream, maybe with sprinkles? No, I don't really like it. Uh, if it was out of the ring, you would. If it was, but I don't like sprinkles, so we'll hit no, right? Interesting choice, almost there. Let me see. Do you like pina coladas <laughs> on holiday? Yes, it's if for me. Like <laughs> bring me oh, Barry Mallow. Yeah, bring me the picture. Okay, yeah. Do you like Raisin Bran Sailors? Oh, now I do. So I, I have them most days. I have Birchers and stuff like that, believe it or not. Do you like Treacle? I do like Treacle. I do like that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's come up with, there you go. That's what to buy me for Christmas, a Craig and Moore 12. There you go. What do you think of that, Marty? Well, have you ever tried it? You'll have to give it a whirl. You have to get a ball. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to give it a word, and it comes up with this complex flavor profile thing. What's yeah. this all about? This is, this is their sort of flavor profile. This gives you an idea of what you like, and then it gives you your selection and some of the things down below. <clears throat> so it's a bit of a fun, it's a bit of a marketing tools, all it is really. But it. Um, oh, I do, I do like pictographs like that. I think they work yeah, very, I very well indeed. Yeah, I think they, are. I think they ask. Uh, uh, they, they do they do work quite well, yeah. But it's it's um, it's, let's be honest, it's it's always going to be a bit of a gimmick. But it's a nice thing to do, you know. All so right, you might give you suggestions for stuff that you don't know. You know? Good, 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 good. So uh, I like these marketing things. So if you want to try that yourself, go there and try whatsyourwhiskey.com. So we're going to try the bow more. No, nope, we're going to put another one in because that's about twenty minutes now. So we're going to put yes, another drop in there. It is. It is about twenty minutes. Yeah, and then what we'll do is do that. See, right, the original 20 minutes. 20 minutes that's only been poured, still to be poured. The future. Now, <laughs> hold on before we do the last story. I want to do some of the mentions oh, here. John, Do John Don has been in. You mentioned sense. <laughs> I was thinking just making cocktails needs to be a regular feature. Yeah, uh, I would, but I'm not Tom <laughs> Cruise, so we won't go there. Uh, I think I think we should get you making more cocktails. If I'm honest, I think John's got a point. Well, we do we do we do have a couple of nice ones uh, with the, the fever tree sitting over here, but we're saving them for a, a special interview, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Right, we've got we've got to catch up with somebody. Um, yeah, and there's more. Michael Matthews says, "Would artificial be intelligence be a politician?" No, because that would imply any intelligence, and it'd be much more than most of the politicians that we have. Uh, yeah. William Meyer, who I haven't heard on the show before, do you recognise him as a Canadian? <laughs> Did you ask who doesn't like O.J. Simpson? I love O.J. Simpson. I think he was great in Capricorn 1, <laughs> and I think it's all true. Uh, and then Tom, Tom Jones, I think. Tom Jones is coming to Belfast on Tuesday night. Tom Jones says, hi, guys, from Donegal. Yes. Uh, is a pint whiskey chaser not classed as a cocktail? <laughs> yeah, it probably is. Uh, Thomas, you, you'll be a man after my own heart. Probably, yeah. pro, 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 probably is. So, now, uh, what's mystery, up next? Mystery. Detective stories, Justin. Da -dun, da -dun. There's an investigation at the uh, into what happened to a bottle of whiskey that was given to Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State under under the, the Donald, under, under President Trump. Now, uh -huh. supposedly, a bottle of uh, Kurosawa whiskey that is supposedly valued at six thousand dollars. It was given to him, and it's vanished. And it's a mystery. Nobody knows what possibly could ever have happened to it. Getting onto a plane was it? Was the Exorcist near it? Was the Exorcist no, near no, it? The Exorcist across the street. No, but like if the Exorcist had been on that plane, it would have. The spirits would definitely have disappeared. <laughs> And I, um, by the way, legally, under the because I checked this out, under the Constitution, it's illegal for a US official to keep gifts over three hundred and ninety dollars. It seems a bit arbitrary, but there you go. But if you do, if you do keep it, you have to pay for it. You have to give the the, the value of it. So it would be he would have to pay six thousand dollars. Now he, he got interviewed about it, and uh, it, uh, oh, so I've got to read this one right. Marty, before hit playing this, Frank Hearn says, even and all, being from a farming background, 
AI has a very different meaning. It obviously means artificial ins insemination. If you ever yeah. see, if, see if you ever read uh, the James Herriot books, All Creatures Great and Small. There's a great story about artificial insemination. It's hilarious, hilariously funny. Brilliant. Mm. Here's another quick quote. Mark curses is drinking it the same as keeping it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. Here, here we'll hit play and see what this is about. Today is that around the G20 meeting in uh, Japan in 2019, you apparently, I don't know if it was given to you directly or not, uh, were given as a gift from the Japanese government a bottle of whiskey that was fairly rare. <laughs> it was worth about $6,000, which the State Department now says it can't find. Any idea where the whiskey is? The, the the great case of the missing whiskey bottle. <laughs> Look, uh, a couple of facts. I, I have no idea. I, I, su I assume it wasn't ever touched. I never got to me. I have no idea how the State Department lost this thing, although I saw enormous incompetence at the State Department during my time there. Uh, had it been a case of Diet Coke, I'd have been all over it. <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 I had I had no idea that they were this was missing, that there was an investigation I hear about. This is all this is all just crazy talk. Uh, uh, I, I have no idea where this thing is. I'm happy to, if they want to give me a holler and help me, give me a holler, I'm happy to try and help them find it. <laughs> Maybe they will. I, I don't, I don't know. That's an interesting response. <laughs> Sadly, I wouldn't know the difference between a $58 bottle and a $5,800 bottle. <laughs> when anyway, it comes, uh, especially with a little to, Diet Coke. When it comes to Diet Coke, <laughs> he is an aficionado. Mr. Secretary, good to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you. You know what they say? <laughs> now, I could probably solve the mystery. I would imagine it probably went very well with Coke Zero. I, I would imagine somebody drank it. You know, you hand over a bottle of whiskey. Oh, here's a gift. Oh, thanks very much, President uh, Abbey, whatever his name is. Hand it over to an, to an official. Do, do, do. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, if you share it around the plane, it's less worth than $358 a shot. So it would well, be all right then. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's a cover up, just like Kennedy. <laughs> I, I can just imagine the Conservatives doing that. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, can you give us a case of that free? Mm. Can you give us a truck of that free? Sure, uh, if there's our politicians over here, they'd be wondering what all the fuss was about. Is it, you know, I know. they'd be phoning up and get their mates. Can we mate, get free bottles? <laughs> That's what they were doing with the RHI sure, scandal. We, we do the same. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, listen, I'm not in a position of power or authority. I'm easily corrupted. <laughs> you do it for a bar of chocolate, you admit to laugh yourself. Oh, I, did. I did. I did. I've got to laugh at this. The fact that they give it our time uh, just adds to our content, but there you go. Um, <laughs> So what do you what do you make of that, folks? Uh, it's rather bizarre. Uh, but like I guess I think we could solve the mystery fairly quickly. Somebody drank it. Okay, okay. <laughs> mystery solved. Get over it. Right. And we're turning into QVC here, are we? Why? At Christmas comes early. Well, no. You have to put this in context. I seen this video during the week, and this guy reminded me of you when you get a free bar of chocolate or a free scone. Okay, if you watch the video, look how happy he looks. Okay, okay. honestly, I, I look it just he looks so happy. And to be fair, look at the bottle. The bottle looks really smart. I, I absolutely nailed on. And I am just having a quick look at the COVID that was just bottled the other day. Today is uh, Wednesday, the fourth of August, and the last time I tasted this uh, was pre-bottling, just before we went into the bottle. So. This is uh, just to see what it's like and make sure I'm happy with it. So we'll do the reveal. I won't be showing you the tower code because it's not for sale yet. And uh, we'll just hold that back. So I'll open it Oh, this looks good. Cool, right? Look at wow. that. Wow. Wow. That looks smart. I think okay. there. And we have our uh, red, our rose colored bit lock. So just do that. That's incredible. The open. Yeah. It looks it just looks That's the first opening of it. Obviously okay. The whiskey glass, jam brand. Pour some out. Put the lid back on. There it is, the cool bag poured out. And we're just going to have a smell and a taste of it. <laughs> wow. Lucky man. Yep. Yeah. That's the dog, all right. 
I won't be giving you any taste to you know throughout night there. Look at the length on that one. Look at the for you. Okay. Somebody direct something behind them. <laughs> Just gonna have a little taste of our sound chip. <laughs> Last time I see the face like that was whenever you got your damn summit, steady eddies and hard. <laughs> non chill filtered. No E150A caramel. Just about a loveliness. From 25 single farms and a little bit of organic. It's an emotional experience for him almost. Yeah, All the work is for that, you know. I'm happy with that. Why now? Ooh, there we go. That was his face, his, face, his face does look tough to do that. <laughs> he, he looks absolutely he looks overwhelmed actually. Well, that's the guess. I mean a lot of work is on any of that kind of stuff. And you know, Waterford have got lots of stick and lots of the, if you ever see them being interviewed and stuff, not not Ned necessarily, it's more uh Mark Rainey, a uh he gets dog abuse. He gets abuse. He's, he's handy for it, you know. Yeah, that's fabulous. Listen, folks, if you're wa watching tonight, make sure you comment, like, and share. Marty has been pulling boar moors uh, from uh, a 19 year old bottle. He's poured them at different periods here, and he's gonna. Are you trying one yet? No. No, 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 no. We'll try. No. What we'll do is we'll do the interview that we done during the week with Lauren from Bush Mills, and uh, then we'll. we'll do the science baby after it, you know. Right. How many have you poured to so far? You you poured one about half an hour ago. You poured one about 10 minutes ago. Yep. And, and then, then we'll you're going to... The next one, after we've seen the interview, we'll bong one on that there. Okay. Right. Here we go. We spoke to Bushmills brand ambassador, Lauren. Uh, she had... Uh, well, she never gives much away, Marty, does she? See, she's not allowed to, okay? But... Uh, she she's she gives little hints as to what's possibly going to be coming up in the not too distant future. She can't okay. give specifics, but she gives some things, some hints and indications. Here we go. The Green Goddess has joined us her, herself, Marty. <laughs> yep, she has. Bubbly Lauren. Hiya. How are we? <laughs> Hi guys, how are we? I've been called worse to be fair, so that's a, <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> Hi, uh, no, and, uh, I was working this morning. I was walking around Belfast, and I've, I've, I've got heavy legs. I'm not used to this labour. Not used to this working anymore. You no, know, I feel uh, I feel as I feel as if I should maybe take some some time off. Haven't been off for about a year and a half. <laughs> I think it's the way forward. Back it back a few weeks and need more time off. I know. I think everybody's just exhausted. Much easier these days, aren't they? It's been a weird it's, year. <laughs> it's, oh, it's been a very weird time. It's a tough year. He could do with a drink of that there stuff. That there stuff's delicious. I, I, I drank most of that bottle, by the way. Lauren, I get sent this bottle out as the press release, right? I got the press release. Yes. Now, what happened was, I was working last week, and I said to Justin, because you sent out a cocktail card, and I said to Justin, I'll throw this over to you. You can make the cocktails, because it's more up your street, Justin. You prefer the cocktail thing. That's what I got back. That's what he drank in a week. Right. I said, I had to say to him, leave that. Don't be drinking it all on me. So he, he, did, he, it did, he didn't, didn't like it then, Justin, did you? <laughs> I, I liked it. It would be an understatement. I, I, I was well, well, well impressed by it. As a matter of fact, so impressed. I made both the cocktails twice, liberally. <laughs> Home measures, free pour. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. measures, you can say that again. Oh, measures. Right. Love it. So this is, this is the second one of these, okay? Is of indeed. the American oak cask finish. So tell us what, tell us about it, Lauren. Tell us about it. Yes. Yeah, so um, we, I was with you folks in April, which seems like yesterday, um, mm -hmm. for the kind of the, the start of the um, original cask finish series. So this series, just to kind of recap on it, um, is really a fresh perspective on the classic Bushmills original whiskey. So what we're doing is we're using really the original as kind of the foundation, the building blocks for these cask finishes and for this series. So of course, back in April, um, we kicked it off with the release of the Caribbean rum cask finish. 
And last Wednesday, we had the launch, of course, of the American Oak Cask Finish. So this is the second um, release within this series. And this whiskey, so the American Oak Cask, is really inspired by um, a partnership between the Old Bush Mills Distillery and the Kelvin Cooper Ridge in Louisville yeah. in Kentucky. And that partnership, it actually spans well over 30 years. And um, the village of Bush Mills itself is actually twinned with Louisville. I don't know if you, you guys knew that. Um, so we're actually twinned with Louisville, uh, which happened as part of the 400th anniversary celebrations back in 2008. So really just strengthening, strengthening that tie um, between the two villages and really just amalgamating two really two whiskey making capitals of the world, Bushmills and Louisville. So that was kind of the, the inspiration behind this whiskey. So it is aged in double charred American oak casks. And I know, yes, there we are. You've got a beautiful little stave uh, from your media kits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the char is still fresh, great char's smell. Still fresh. Char's still it fresh. Is. It's a beautiful smell, you know, when you disgorge a barrel um, and mm -hmm. some of the char kind of breaks off from the wood and it's just lying on the bottom. Oh, the smell's beautiful. <laughs> um, so, yes, we last Wednesday, um, as you mentioned, party was the media launch. So really the press launch for this whiskey. And as part of that, we had Paul McLaughlin, who is the president of the Kelvin Cooperage. He joined us and he really gave us such a fantastic and interesting insight okay. into kind of his 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 career, his journey, and obviously the Kelvin Cooperage as well. So one of the main things that stands out and one of the real kind of influences on this whiskey is obviously the double charred American oak barrels. So um, what they do, a typical char would be usually between 60 or 90 seconds. But at the Kelvin Cooperage and for the barrels they send across to ourselves at Bush Mills, they actually char them for between 15 and 20 minutes, which I think is insane. So they don't go by time. Mm -hmm. They go by when they feel that the wood and the cask is ready. So they're kind of judging that by aroma and smell of the, the wood which I think is incredible, just that extra mm -hmm. attention really to detail. So within the barrel, you almost have that layer of toast and a layer of char. So we've really penetrated quite deep into the wood. Yeah. So from that, the impact on the whiskey, and you can definitely, you know, it's really evident in your glass, is that beautiful kind of, you know, warm wood, spiciness a little bit, uh, fresh vanilla. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Right. Um, so yeah, you've Which, poured already. I've I'm one step ahead of you. I've already poured. Uh, good girl, Justin. Mm, Justin, look what we have, Justin. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Justin's had three quarters of the bottle, so he's a. He, <laughs> so you could be going by memory here. Now, it, this this obviously is the second in, yep. in the the cast finish series. Mm -hmm. Um, I've tried I've tried this already. Um, um, I think this is good. But it is it's designed really for mixing. This this is this is this is your mixer type finishing to, mm. to be it's it's drinkable by itself, but yeah. it's really designed as a as a mixer and, and a lovely sort of highball, you know, whiskey soda type stuff. The rum cask and the sort of standalone stuff. Now I bought I've done mm. something a bit special here. I brought out an old bushmills from the oh, 1980s. Nice. Right, so we have an old bush mills from the 80s because this is essentially what this is based on. And I know from the 80s, it's a slightly different, different, slightly different profile of what you buy. Today. I used to have to go around to the off license and buy that for my grandfather, bearing in mind that I was <laughs> underage, but they knew it was for him. That's right. true. <laughs> what they didn't, yeah, they didn't care. What I will say is the bush mills character is definitely there, and this is this is a lot of the flavor drift that you get from old old bottles to today it does change and there's no no denying that for various reasons yeah. but there's definitely the character of that coming through oh 100 percent. yeah massively and even we you know we hosted a tasting there at belfast whiskey week on friday and mm -hmm. we were covering bush mills from the 1970s so the bush mills three star and obviously as you say you know casts were slightly different you know they might not have been as, as fantastic as they are today but um that bush mills profile and that character is still evident in your glass which is incredible mm -hmm. even from you know that the 10 year the first and second edition 10 years right up to today the, the mm -hmm. 10 year old malt you still get that kind of 
character bushmills fruitiness and that floral note within your glass so it, it does it, it does pull through um kind of yeah pulls through the decades which is incredible it is and and the no small part i have to say to to helen mulholland for what she does i mean she's an incredible she has incredible talent i mean she really is now that when it's coming through you're getting that light fresh aroma that it's coming through the yep. one thing i will say is this isn't overly powered by vanilla. It's not by. It's not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. It's it's. If I'm honest, it's a little bit sweeter than than the, my style of whiskies. But it's perfect yeah. for Justin. Justin loves that kind of thing. Um, that lighter Irish character, you would say. You know that. Yeah. that it's sweet. It's sweet without being sickly sweet. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's um, and I think you know the the cask finish the cask series. They are really approachable, really versatile whiskey. So, you know, that's what we kind of aimed for and what we wanted. So they're kind of as at home in your glass neat, as you said, Marty, or in a cocktail, you know, like a the base of a classic gold fashion. So it does work really well both ways. Yeah. And I think that was one of the main kind of, you know, really positive elements of feedback that came back to us was, you know, obviously the Causeway collection was very premium, very exclusive, you know, yes. very old age whiskies. You know, you have to appreciate that not everyone is willing to spend that much on a bottle of whiskey. So these are these are really, really um, great price points. And the quality kind of surpasses the price point as well. It's really, really good quality whiskey for really reasonable price as well. So when's the peach peach flavored one going to come out? When's the peach flavored one going to come out? Come on, tell us. Are you thinking like the peach, you know, like the sour sweeties, like the little. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, dear. Justin, that would be an interesting one. Justin, sweet, sweet, sweet. That right, he is a really you sweet love it. I've, I've, I say this all the time. I don't have that sweet palate, I, sweet tooth. I, I like things a little bit less sweet and a bit more umami. Yeah. But Bushmills, I, I congratulate Bushmills because there's this push for ultra premium stuff all the time. And for a long time, Bushmills, I think, kind of missed the boat a little bit and that they weren't bringing this style of stuff out. They weren't bringing out the single casks. They weren't... And, then they brought out the Causeway collection and then this. This is what will be the staples of, of Irish whiskey. This is the backbone of Irish whiskey, not your single cask stuff. That's okay. Fire nose out maybe once, twice a year. But most people, the vast majority of the whiskey drinking public, ain't buying 150 pound bottles of whiskey. They just aren't. People like me buy them. <laughs> you know, that's who buys this kind of thing because it's all I really spend any money on. Have you seen my car, for example? <laughs> that's a good reason why I drive that car. And that's it. <laughs> but that's it. You know, people buy these um, 25, 30, 35 pound balls because they don't mind spending yeah. a little bit more. And some of them they'll like and some of them they won't. But they don't feel cheated if they buy something. 30 pound and, it, and it's it's not to their taste you can't please everybody but exactly the fact that the fact that bush mills have done this i think they're to be applauded because the more of it the better they're approachable they're affordable laura absolutely yeah. absolutely and i think it, you know you made a really good point there there these will be the whiskies that will have that permanent place in your drinks cabinet you know, Absolutely. and a lot of people said, especially as you know, you know, when the, the Caribbean rum cask came out, and it's the same with this one as well, um, that it would be their everyday drinking whiskey. It could really become a staple in that regard. And even, you know, Bush Mills is is a single malt distillery. That's who we've kind of really rooted ourselves yeah. in within the industry as being that single malt um, whiskey distiller um and even with these cast finish series while while they are blends it's the malt component that we're still focusing on so it's that yeah. malt component only that's been aged in the rum casks or in this instance the double charred american oak casks so we're still pushing the, the importance of the malt um but yeah absolutely these will be the staples these will kind of you know have a place alongside black bush for example uh, in the drinks trolleys you know yeah no but like this, I, I have a very serious problem because I never have any black bush in the house because pretty much as soon as I buy it, I drink it all. It's I don't away. Drink, I don't drink anything else, <laughs> that's the truth. And I I, I I, always think I must go and buy a bottle of that. But I know as soon as I buy it, I don't drink anything else. I just yep. pour through it. It's the most fabulous whiskey. And Absolutely. It's hard to beat. It is. And for, this, is, this is a little bit of a problem for me personally with bush metals 
And that every time I play something like this, I, my instinct is just to compare it to Black Bush. And yeah. it just, Black Bush just stands at head and shoulders and it's class of pretty much above everything else. You know, it's yeah. just the most fabulous drink. Um, now, this is the second of these. Can we expect any more to be coming down the line? Well, I'm brilliant at telling you a lot without <laughs> telling you anything. Um, so I think when when the Causeway collection was launched, of course, last year, you know, we really emphasised that it was a collection. And again, the clue with this is it's in the name. It is a series. So absolutely, we would love to extend it. And, you know, we will be looking at extending it in the future. Um, so absolutely, it's just a case of watching the space as always. <laughs> So, okay, As okay. Always. <laughs> I'm going to try and read your mind. I'm going to try and read your mind. It'll be a mul mulled wine flavor for Christmas. Mulled wine flavor. <laughs> Lauren, do yourself a huge favor and don't try and do the same back again because God knows what's in there. <laughs> crystal ball. Let me, I'll go and get my crystal ball out here. We'll see. <laughs> no. 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 Now, with the cast series, with the cast series, it, it's just a sort of variation on a, on a theme you're just sort of taking standard bush mills mm -hmm. varying it enough to keep the character but just to change just to change the flavor enough to, to give it a distinct taste of its own so absolutely I, I can see where you where there's obvious paths that you're going to head down yeah. um and, and and i look forward to that i do because i do i love bush mills i think it's a fabulous fabulous distillery some of the stuff you pump out is just just the best quality around it really is um now in terms of collection what uh causeway collection can we look forward to series two yeah. of that or a new collectible or what yes so i think obviously the main focus the past few months has been the cast finish series um we always kind of knew that the causeway collection will be a little bit later in the year similar to last year but i would say keep your eyes um peeled from about september onwards and <laughs> there, there'll be a few a few more exciting releases uh coming from from us definitely so yeah but no. this, we're going to be breaking a few more hearts in a few months time like last i know, <laughs> I know. But see i don't know whether because it was a collection and I, and the very name suggests you want a collection you want the full collection the thing is i know i know a couple of real collectors people who collect various things and one, one springs to mind and to be fair half the fun is in the chase if it was all yeah. just set up to you as kind of defeats the purpose people yeah. like the oh i got i managed to get it off a guy from well, well, belgium let, who moved to poland let, that i went to school with listen yeah. we pro we probably have somebody on standby in north korea if the north <laughs> korean collection comes out we, we, we'll be able to get it i can assure you no, I, uh, though you're so right it seemed to be everybody suddenly had these connections all over the world as far as australia to store some bottles it was mm -hmm. brilliant oh i love to see it big shout out to friends of bush mills on, on facebook <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's that you know but the do is that kind of we like doing that we kind of like oh yeah. we got this we got it through because it was too easy half the fun's of the thrill of the chase you know oh absolutely absolutely no. i know um but yeah definitely i think it was uh we were so overwhelmed by the you know the response last year from the causeway collection it was just the you know the response was phenomenal there's no words for it really so um i'd say there'll be a lot of people including myself who are really excited to to, to yeah. launch 2.0 two uh, this year <laughs> <laughs> now you're not open for visitors at the moment we're not, unfortunately. Um, so there is no date for the distillery to reopen as of yet. Um, as I say, you know, I think people really appreciate that the kind of, you know, that the priority is the staff and the safety of, of the course. staff there, um, which everybody can appreciate. So there's no date officially yet. However, um, we're keeping in touch with the with the distillery, of course, as we always do. So if there are any updates, I will be sure to, to be the first to, to put them out to everybody. Um, so everyone can know. Yeah. Well, put it like this, because here I got asked this the other day. I got pulled because a guy said to me, um, "Is is the shop open down at Bushman? I said, "I don't. I think maybe it is. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure. I hadn't mm -hmm. been down, and and he went down looking a bottle of twelve year old. Like, yes. can we? Where can we get our hands on a bottle of twelve year old now that the distillery is closed, Lauren? Well, this is the thing. You can't. Mm. <laughs> because yeah, they. <laughs> 
that's the thing that no the tw- yeah the 12 year distillery exclusive and obviously the 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 acacia wood finished as well yeah. that both distillery reserves yeah they're, they're they're tucked behind the walls of the gift shop unfortunately <laughs> So the distil- know, well well the thing is actually there is the the um gift shop online you can go to bushmills i think dot com and then you can get your get your products on there so you're not at a total loss but <laughs> <laughs> now lauren you've been out and about at belfast whiskey week which was predominantly virtual real realistically yeah. are, are you going to be out and about again and over the next coming months as things re- relax or is that still off the cards as well no, I would like to think that, you know, more and more we would be progressing from kind of virtual events or kind of hybrid virtual events, you know, with a few mm-hmm. people there in person to more kind of, you know, face to face with consumers. Because, I mean, as I said last week at, at Belfast Whiskey Week, whiskey is there to be shared with people and with friends in person. Um, so, you know, you kind of do miss that human interaction. Now, the next thing that we're hopefully going to be at um and hopefully it goes ahead is the Belfast Whiskey Social will be the next thing. Now I know Whiskey Live Dublin has been pushed back to March, I believe, mm. um, next year. But yeah, I would definitely like to think that we'd be kind of getting out there a little bit more and yeah, doing as many festivals and things as we can, absolutely. Um the main focus obviously when hot when hospitality reopened was getting back into all of our incredible bars here in Belfast yeah. and yeah, just spreading a bit of joy and a bit of whiskey <laughs> with our with our incredible our incredible bartenders here in Belfast. Well, the, the thing is, uh, we all appreciate that it has to be safe, but there is mm-hmm. the, as things start to open up and be more manageable, and people have everybody's got their jabs and so on and so forth. Yeah, it, it, we just look forward to just getting back to civilization, back to back Absolutely. to people to just going down and having a drink and not having to give your telephone number and QR codes and things up your nose to get tests done. I had to do one literally yeah. before we come on here. Yeah, I hate them. There was a guy, there was a guy at the cruise line, Justin will back me up, and uh-huh. he, was, he was doing one. And I swear he was cleaning the back of my eyeball. And there's people have been smacked oh. for a hell of a lot less than this, Lauren. <laughs> right? oh. so, so I, I had to tell him, no, give me that. No, don't be doing that again. Oh, so, so yeah. It's just horrible. It's just horrible, you know? They're not pleasant. Yeah, they're not pleasant yeah, they're not at pleasant. all. But, Definitely uh, not, but... Yeah, as I said, whiskey, you know, obviously Belfast Whiskey Week, there were a few great people who did come and join us um, for the events. But as you say, most of it was virtual. So I can't wait to get back out there and actually just have everybody in the same room for, you know, our launches and everything like that as well. I really, really look forward to that day. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll be nice to get back to normality. Now, Lauren, yep, um, this is available pretty much all over now, isn't it? Yeah, so actually as of tomorrow, pretty much, so as of the 4th, um, this should be hitting your shelves. So this will obviously be available in um, Centra of licenses across uh, NI and available also in all good um, independent off sales as well. So the likes of uh, Friend at Hand, The Vineyard, Crafty Vinter, for example, obviously if you're in Belfast, um, and Fairleys, obviously, if you're kind of up the North Coast direction as well. So, yeah, all, all great independent off sales as usual. And it should be hitting your shelves tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, price, Wednesday. Price Perfect. point? Which is 24, 24, 24. So, exactly the same as a carbine rum cask. So, oh. really, really accessible whiskey. Brilliant price for a fantastic Absolutely. quality whiskey. Absolutely. Well, put it like this the way Irish whiskey prices have been going and continue to go, the fact that you can get something alternative with good quality whiskey for for 24 pound it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for people to try it really is uh, uh, 100 and it's definitely a no-brainer if it's in the center at least they have some of those uh sort of ch- glacier cherries for the, for the cocktail <laughs> mix exactly such an easy cocktail to make as well three three ingredients whiskey sugar syrup bitters there you Just, go uh, uh, lauren, lauren you don't know how happy justin gets when he gets it <laughs> when he gets <laughs> Uh, oh you, don't, you don't know how happy Mine, it makes Mine's Justin. over in my drinks, trolley. <laughs> you don't know how happy Justin gets making a wee cocktail, with a wee umbrella and all that. I swear, you want to see him. He gets all, he gets you know than he does with a bar of chocolate. Justin, I'm like, I'm like you. I love a cocktail, so you're you're a man after my own heart. Absolutely, all for it. Chris and nuts as well go down as well. <laughs> oh, no. maybe, maybe I can bab on the way home to. <laughs> 
Okay, Lauren. Yeah. Lauren, thanks very much for joining us, and uh, we'll get talking to you again shortly. Okay. Absolutely, thanks very much. no problem, folks. Thank you for having me. Take care. Slowncha. Cheers. Bye bye. There you go, Marty. What about that? <clears throat> nice girl. Um, and she does love her bush smells. Now, I did a review of this during the week, okay? And, mm-hmm. I, and I think there's a few people, a few people said to me, oh, you're a bit hard on that. I'm not hard on it, right? Let's just put that, let's clarify this. It isn't for me, okay? It, uh, this kind of thing, you know, spending a bit more money and having a bit more, because I, I, that's what I spend my money on, on the more whiskeys. It's a little sweet for me, so it's not going to be for, up there with me. And uh, I thought it was good. It, it, it. Yeah, it's it's out. Uh, it's part of the core range, so it will be available in the US of A. Yeah. This one, yeah. But yeah. I guess the, if, I've been talking to some people about the price of Irish whiskey at the minute, mm-hmm. uh, and people because they you know guys that are buying it and sourced and and so on, and they're saying that it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. And so whenever you're getting something from Bushmills that they're just releasing themselves. And it's a different slant on the Bushmills original, just a slightly different taste. And mm-hmm. they're still bringing out decent quality whiskey for for entry level for £20, £25, that kind of thing. At the minute, uh, you're not going to get anything at that price. Everything else is at least £10 more expensive. Excellent, you know? excellent stuff. No. Yeah, no. Looking so forward, to, the, looking forward to this. Is. Looking forward to this, right? Right, this is the last of the trio. So, so I've never, t- I've never actually tasted this before. But it's almost like I've had it sitting. I'm sure it's maybe sat in there two years. How are you going to tell the difference? Which one are you going to try first? The one you've just poured, the one you poured about half an hour ago, or the one you poured an hour ago? Well, what you do is right. That's that's an hour. That's say half an hour, and that's right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, now this, by the way, is 48.9%. So it maybe needs a drop of water. Possibly. We'll try that in a minute. Okay. What's that nose? It's quite rich. A fair wee bit of smoke, actually. Is there a difference between these? I'm going to say there is. Okay, that's, that's a little bit flatter than this. Okay. So, so the air has given more body. No. The air. This. This taste. This smells. Sorry, this smells different than that. This nose and different. Okay. This is this. This is a much better nose than that has. Mm-hmm. Now, this, because this has been out of the ball, this has had time to sell. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now, that nose is better than the other two. It's been out for longer. Nice woody notes. There, there's a... that. Is this lovely? Bowmore has this. Uh, I really like this. It's not almost that gasoline, that petroly type smell. It's that almost a chemical. What what you're actually saying is you should 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 order your pint, sip it over an hour, and then have the whiskey as a chaser. Then well, it's like this. Don't, no point in doing this whenever it's just a night a, a really young whiskey of something that's the you know a par okay. or, or a black bush. No point in doing this. This is for something that has a bit of age to it. This is a 19-year-old whiskey. So it's only just opened. You know, if you're down, if you're if you're down this level, different ball game, because the oxygen's already been getting to it. Oxygen's was doing the, the reactions here, by the way. And That's rather nice, actually. That is, that, that's, that's rather a nice whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> 
See, you know, that's actually fireier than that. And I, actually, this actually has a, a slightly soapy mouthfeel to it, where this doesn't. And now for this one. Definitely, it's improved by sitting out. Um, without question, it has. Uh, okay. This has actually got more fire in it. That's slightly, that's got a, a slightly soapy mouthfeel to it, and that's the best of the three. So it's right. been sitting out. Now, if it sat out for too long, it'll over oxygenate. But it definitely has. It definitely there, there's a difference between all three of these. And you remember this is this was poured about an hour ago or best part of an hour ago. It is, it is for, it's coming up in an hour ago, about 15 eight minutes ago now. So this is this has changed in character over that period of time. Don't be trying this with something um a, a, a non-age statement such so you need to do it with something age statement to give yourself a parameter and a, and a and a point where you can move it through. But it definitely does change it. And I'm not going to go into and do a full review of the whole thing right now. But there's a difference in smell, a difference in, in taste across it, and even a, and certainly a difference in finish of it. You know, they they want the check. Did you have snap, crackle, and pop before you entered the room? No, he didn't. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I, I, I had a steak earlier on this evening. Oh, did you, you? Did you one of the lovely steaks? Did you? Mm, I had. Uh, uh, a, few other, <laughs> a few other questions I've seen there. I've seen somebody asking about. Um, Powers in Dublin for 28 euros. How do they make money at that retail price? Volume. Uh, but, but Justin, you take the tax off. I mean, up here, I, I saw Johnny Walker Red Label for £14 the other mm -hmm. day in was it Tesco's or something, wherever it was. Now, £11 of that's tax. You know, the, 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 about £10.70 or something is, is tax. Mm -hmm. I, how these people make money at some of that stuff is just beyond me, but that's what they're selling at. Um, I seen Michael asking about the sexton. Um, Not been I, able to tell what's in the bottle. I said use the force. <laughs> the only way, the bottle, the bottle's the selling point. I, the, the sexton's really tasty, but the bottles of it's hexagonal. Good. It's the dark yeah. as well. You can't see. It's it, you know you've got that, hang, but it's big, heavy, thick glass. So probably the only way just to give it a quick shake. <laughs> Possibly do what they do with the barrels. You know, give it a tap with a tap. hammer and listen. Listen, you know, tap to see where it's at. It's, it's, I don't I understand. Um, and I, I've had a few bottles of sex then, and I was pretty much the same. And it runs out fairly quick. I've noticed. I don't know why it's that. Big, happens. It's it a runs big, runs thick out. bottle. You say it's probably a big, a thick big, bottle. Big, thick bottle it must have a hole in the back of it or something, <laughs> or it drips out the back. Or a friend that, that likes to uh, exercise it. Uh, yeah. Bowmore is a great dram, says Andrew McAllister. Bowmore is. I just wish it would be a little less heavy. Well, saying that, that's, I don't know whether there's much colour in this, but it just, it's... Uh, but you said the colour didn't affect it last week. You said no, the colour didn't no, affect it. No, no. See, the problem was, I, I, I've seen guys saying that they can taste the colouring. They can't, okay? You can't. Because if you could taste it, on the tiny little bit that they put in <sighs> to the, the vats, you would be able to taste it on the top of your tongue, right? Without question. We, we, we're guaranteed this is science again. It is, but maybe these people are actually aliens and they have a better sense of taste than us. But very well may be. They've been, Bill Gates's job has made them into <laughs> one of the lizard people. But no, uh, no. But the thing is, my point of it was that you, there's not a taste really of it. Okay, so whenever you say, well, you can taste the colouring, you can't. But what colouring does is it takes away a bit of the magic or a bit of the story. Now, if you're drinking pars, and they use colouring and pars, you know, you just standardise it through the range. It doesn't really matter because it's not that big a deal. You're buying pars and buying this because you like the taste of it. You like, you like having a drink and you might be having three or four drinks or having a night with the mates. It's not important. Mm -hmm. When you get it in, when you get colouring in something like this, you're wanting the bottle to tell you a story. You know, you're wanting to find out where it's come. Where, what has the cast or the casks put into this? And whenever they put um, colouring in it, 
they're kind of taking away a little bit of the story for you. They're, you know, they're sort of masking over it. And that, to me, is the problem with colouring. It's not a question of taste, because it doesn't really taste of anything. But the, the thing is, if you if you know that it's a sherry cask finish and you hold it up and it's very thin and watery, you know the views are not a great sherry, but, you know, if you... If you if you use a sherry cask, it really should impart colour on the, on the on the spirit. So whenever you buy buy this and you hold it up and it's not got the colour, you, you kind of know right and over a mat here. But if they colour it, you're taking away about the story. You're, you're, you're basically pulling the wool over people's eyes. And that's at the higher end. At the, the basic end, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't because it's not big data. There's anymore. some very smart people watch this show. This is what Frank Hearn says. He says, initially buy two bottles of Sexton. When one runs out, open the other and buy another new bottle. The Simple. Kanban system. The Toyota yeah. Kanban system. <laughs> once, once one's done, you know we buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, how the, that's how you two, and that's how the Japanese car companies made it to the top of the world. They had the Kanban system. You've won there. If you finish that, you just move that up, that up, and then go, oh, there's an empty one. I'll put it in there. Uh-huh. That's why I have a spare car. For that very purpose. No. See, this is why I drive a wee crabby Citroen C3 and you've got a wee two-seater sports car and all. Mm. (laughs) Drifting and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's why why you like the Bush Bells American Oak. Nice and cheap. And that's why why I have to open a £140 bottle, whatever that was. Is that what that is? is? It's something like that. It's on Amazon. It's an Amazon (laughs) retail. Amazon's exclusive day that's bought for Amazon. Boy, that looks it looks beautiful. It does it's look actually, beautiful. It's actually, it's actually quite nice. But Bowmore, Bowmore's a funny one because so it's a night. It's obviously an island whiskey, and it's got that nice smokiness to it. But it's not smoky, smoky, smoky. And smoke's there on a level just to add a bit of complexity to it, and it's. And and some of them, some of them are better than others. If I'm honest, there's been a few bowmores that aren't aren't great, but they they, they they do some fabulous stuff. This is quite good. I wouldn't say it's massively brilliant, but it's good. Good to know. Listen, <laughs> folks, thanks very much for watching. You've been watching the Irish Whiskey Review live on YouTube and Facebook. The repeat runs on Instagram and LinkedIn. There's also an audio version on. Anchor, or wherever you get your podcast from. Ask your smart speaker. Tell your family and friends, and especially your mates that are into whiskey. Not just Irish whiskey, but this is Irish whiskey review of whiskies from around the world. And thank you, God, for making it rain tonight. And everybody that's normally out in their camper van being in to watch the show. <laughs> Tony Sillett, it's a good night. Yes, it is. Uh Mark Kerr as well. It was a good show. Love what you've done with your camper van, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Jordy Burke saying, great show, as usual. Thank you, Jordy. Andrew McAllister saying, uh, I-, I said before, one of the best drums I had was a Bordeaux Cats finished seven-year-old in the pot. pot. So, oh, the pot's still in Glasgow. Oh, You'll maybe get oh, back there someday. I'll go, hopefully I'll get back again soon. What and a there's what Brian, a Brian Cassidy <laughs> saying, cheers. Uh, William Marathon, thank you all. Uh, Michael Massey's, I think Mr. Amazon has enough money. I won't help him make any more. Thanks, lads. Oh, I don't mind him because he's he's all he's he's honest about what he does. And to tell you the truth, I, I, I bought stuff there on a Thursday and it came on Saturday. And if you're too busy to do anything and it's very hard to get. Amazon's also dead funny when he flies out in his base and what looks like a giant phallus. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit like it's a bit like Austin Powers. You couldn't make it up. <laughs> it uh, uh, Trevor Watson, cheers. Uh, and let's face it, we all like the weather, girl. Uh, Frank Hearn has sent another interesting informative show. Uh, William McClellan has sent hello. We will eventually get down to see you, William. Don't worry. Yes, one William, one Wednesday we will. I mean, we do want to because, you know, I want to try that pizza. Uh, Mark Kerr saying uh, LOL. And Patrick Multhy, thanks again, guys. Great show as always. Good night. And uh, thank you very much for all the best, guys. Take care.